G'day YouTube, so today is um, a little bit of a special because I haven't ever shown you my glass house. So it's a 3 metre by 3 metre by 3 metre glass house, so the height is 3 metres. And um, I just wanted to give you a little tour about um, how I grow my tropical plants in here. Well they're not really tropical, most of them are subtropical, um, but I'm going to give you a little... Uh, rundown about how I keep the temperature stable in here. So this is just a brief overview but I'll introduce all the plants to you. So this here is in the ginger family, it's the galingal and um, it's used a lot in Thai curries and stuff like that. Um, I've just bought it just because I could, don't really know how to cook with it. Um, and then I'll show you the next ones. So this one is a wax jambu here, and it's got a lovely red um, fruit. It looks sort of like an upside down strawberry, and it's got a spongy texture. Um, I saw this on YouTube, and I really wanted to see what it tasted like, so that's why I bought it. Um, over here is my mango, and it seems to be doing well. I've been following Fairchild Nurseries and how they prune their mangoes quite religiously. And apparently when you first plant it, you tip everything. So as you can see, I've got all this flush new growth. And um, it looks like it's surviving so far. I need to remind you that it is autumn, but inside the glass house, I'd say it's a good 30 degrees Celsius and it's warm. Down here, just experimenting with some taro. I bought these online um, just from a nursery from Northern Australia and because it's so warm what I've done is I've planted mango seeds and the seedlings have come up and my intention is I'm going to start grafting some of those tropical plants, uh, some of those uh, mangoes onto these ones because uh, mangoes, if that you've got one seed in the middle, so uh, monoembryonic, apparently they don't graft true to seed, so um, I'm going to have to graft these over. Um, just a little guava here. So this one people might recognise as um, a chestnut, and I'll tell you why it's here. It's actually in the ground, and this patch of ground before was not doing well in the garden at all. Um, it was very thin soil in this glass house here, um, and the fact was if I dug down more than 30 centimetres or a foot, I'd reach um, solid rock. So what I thought was, it's not doing well, I'm just going to put a glass house over the top. So I actually cut this chestnut down and planted around it, but I think it's the humidity and the warmth in here that really um, gets these plants going. And I've never seen this chestnut do so well. So that has to be dug out, but the problem is it's so warm that I don't know if it's going to go into dormancy. And outside it's still quite cold, so I'm going to have to figure that one out. So in the background there, um, so in the foreground you see a guava, and in the background, or here, um, this is what they call kangkong here. It's really popular as a Asian greens and I found that planting it in food grade pots filled with water really helps regulate the temperature here so if you do notice over here along the perimeter of the fan of the um, glass house wall I've got lots and lots of um, uh, buckets of water and um, some of them are full of dirt such as this one some of them are just on their own like that and what that does is it soaks up that excess heat during the day where it can reach about 40 degrees Celsius or over 100 degrees in Fahrenheit. And what that does is um, it soaks up the ex excess heat and releases it slowly at night. And now that it's getting colder, I'm just experimenting a bit more and I found that today the inside of the temperatures a lot, inside of the glass house is a lot warmer. And the reason being because I've been experimenting and I'll show you what I've been experimenting with. By the way, this is just a lemongrass. It's um, almost as tall as me now. Um, this is a ginger, just a gardenia, 
I'll show you what I've been experimenting with. And if you see here, that's about 200 litres. That's just a bin with about 200 litres of um, water in it. And this one's just probably about 100. I went to the tropical... I went to a tropical aquarium and I got one of these. So what this does, it's um, it's it's one of the water heaters that you use for tropical tanks, and I've actually set mine at a very low temperature. Um, I've only set it for 22 deg 22 degrees Celsius, um, and the reason being is I just want it a stable temperature. The water in here is going to always be around 22 or 23 degrees and that's just perfect for what I want. I don't want something superheated where my electricity bills go through the roof um, and I don't really need that heat because there's not enough sun to actually feed the plants so I don't want the metabolism going through the roof but at the same time I don't want them to freeze in here or, or have a little bit of a temperature shock. So um, during the night, that's mostly when the, um, the temperature is actually needed. Um, so at night, um, it's going to drop below 22 degrees, and that's when um, these heaters would generally fire up. Right now, the temperature of the water is actually over 22 degrees. It's probably more about 25 degrees, um, just because it's been kept warm at 22 throughout the night. And during the day, the glass house excess temperature um, just goes straight into it. Um, so I think I'm, I've come on to something because today, um, yesterday I had a day off, um, today I've got the night shift, but um, coming in today, it's definitely a lot warmer than it was the same time yesterday, which probably means that these, these, um, these buckets of water here that are heated are giving the glass house a warmer head start. In the morning so it doesn't have to um, work as hard to keep the air warm. So I'll show you the rest. Um, as you can see my uh, sweet potato is going crazy and if the craziest thing is these are actually three pots of sweet potato and they've actually taken the whole taken over this whole patch here. Over here I had a few spare slips and they were growing so well that I had to put in um, a wire mesh, a wire frame, and they're actually clambering up the wire frame not too badly. Here's another mango that I've got, and I'm quite proud of this one. It's um, a Florigon, and it took forever for me to find this one. Apparently it's the winner in the taste department, and um, a lot of um, people in Florida, in the States, will probably know this one. Um, it originated in Florida, apparently from a seedling. Um, from Vietnam. I don't know how that works out, but apparently it was discovered in 1924 or something like that. And um, it's a very old heritage mango. And the thing is, the fruit are a little bit small, so it's never become big commercially in Australia because we prefer the larger mangoes. But I've given this a go just because I've heard of really good things about the taste of it. Well, that sort of sums up my glass house tour. You can sort of see the buckets of water on the other side there. And uh, yeah, and this is another guava that's doing very well. It was probably a third of the size just a few months ago. Ah, oh, and another thing. I really wanted to show my North American viewers my uh, poor, poor seedling. It looks terrible, I know. It's still very small. It's just sprouting still. And that's a North American pawpaw, and that's just coming out. Um, I've had to put it in the fridge for about three months. I've put it in, and it's coming up. The one on that side didn't come up, but the other pots, they're all coming up, that I can't really show you, just because they're nicely shaded by all that sweet potato, which is protecting it from the strong sunlight in here. So yeah, basically that's my glass house. It's incredibly warm in here. I need to get out of here. <laughs> Hope you liked it. Okay, till later, take care.